Manchester, the UK's largest cultural and creative cluster outside London and home to 97,500 businesses, the majority of which are startups. Although according to The Telegraph, half of UK startups fail within five years, global brands such as Airbnb, Snapchat and Dropbox are just a few of the success stories that began as startup businesses. So what is the recipe for success? How much determination and perseverance do those in a startup business need to become one of the success stories? We spoke with three different startups to investigate. I've had experience with a couple of different startups, uh, but this, I would say, is the most successful startup that I've had the pleasure of working with. So it's grown just beyond my belief in the last year and a half or so. Uh, when I came on board, there was about 20 some odd people an hour looking at 70 and we're still hiring some uh, new team members. So it's very, very exciting. It's hard work, but it's very, very exciting. Um, hi, my name is Christina and I'm the founder of the Aim Sky High Company. The Aim Sky High Company is a dance organisation for children 2 to 18 years old. We work with children in underprivileged areas, um, from underprivileged and deprived backgrounds, to try and give them opportunities in dance that they wouldn't usually have if it wasn't for us. I always wanted to dance when I was younger, but my mum told me that she didn't think that I was made for dance because I was a bit chubby when I was younger. So at age 13, uh, I got out a Yellow Pages and searched for dance schools and found a dance school. I self-taught alongside learning jazz and started my own dance group at age 13 and started working freelance teaching dance from age 15. Yeah. So my name's Amy Wynn, I'm 24 years old and I run the social enterprise for lunch. We do cooking workshops, street food and catering. I started for lunch at university during my final year, um, had a bit of a crisis, I didn't know what I was going to do after university. Didn't really know what social enterprise was either and I was volunteering at a young person's charity. Saw there was a lot of issues around young pe people's employability and um, unhealthy eating habits and all these kind of issues around surrounding young people that have chaotic lifestyles and might be couch surfing or living on the streets. So I used the kitchen there uh, to start a catering project. After doing my first order with the group, um, it quickly built up to a program and then once I graduated decided to set up on my own. The success of Active Win is probably down to our MD who has a fantastic philosophy about fostering people, developing people, treating people well, treating people with respect and handpicking individuals to make sure that they sort of fit in the culture. And I've seen people grow um, dramatically over the course of you know six months in terms of their abilities and their skills because of the training and the support that they get so I'd say that's probably something that I haven't seen in any of the startups that I was involved with or a lot of the startups that um, I'm aware of and the ones that succeed pretty much have a similar blueprint so it's, it's one that works for sure. It was a bit weird um, setting up the company because I used to do it as a voluntary organisation and teach children for free as a hobby whilst in university. Um, I think the most important thing for me to start a business that helped me the most was winning the competition um, purely because of confidence. And I think when someone has the confidence in you, or for me, when someone had the confidence in me, it gave me a lot of confidence in myself to think, you know what, I might as well try it. Um, I didn't really think or consider being an entrepreneur even when I was what 22 and I was kind of forced into it because I was so almost frustrated and angry at social problems that I could see so I thought what could I do actively to put my degree into practice so I studied politic politics and economics and um, it's not the most usual route after studying and after graduating but I felt that all the things I was understanding about unemployment, economic growth, inequality, social justice, what could I do actively to um, ensure that you know, I was playing my part in that. I was very academic um, throughout my school life and university life, um, kind of worked hard in that way 
that entrepreneurialism only came as a result of frustration and anger at the system, really. <laughs> well, obviously graduation um, was a good starting point for me, but it took a lot, a big push. It wasn't like a, uh, completely my own um, influence there. I had lot, like a, lots of friends saying, you should do it, Amy. Like, I could see it in your, in your eyes and signaling that you need to do this. And I was like, no, I'm scared. Like, maybe I should like, take some time out and figure out what I want to do. But um, it was also financial backing from the university and I'm lucky enough to have savings as well that enabled me just to live without any income for six months. Startups is risky by nature and the one thing that I think is mandatory is to have something that sets you apart from any other business. I would say probably the biggest mistake is giving up too quickly. And it's a very, uh, it really kind of shows what you're made of um, to stick with it because there will be lean times and scary times and times when you don't think it's going to work. Um, and it's, it's fighting through the times when you're doubting yourself or doubting what you're bringing to the marketplace and carrying on. Those are the people that are going to succeed and it's, it's just having the strength to kind of see it through. And I know a lot of businesses that give up in the fairly early stages because at the end of the day, everybody needs to eat, you have bills to pay, but um, if, you, if you have something special, stick with it and it usually pays off. I, I didn't see much risk because I already had like a client base there. Um, but I did not realise how much risk was involved until something went wrong sometimes. So I don't know whether I just didn't see it or it wasn't there and I created problems for myself. <laughs> I think I'll have to go home and reflect on that. But um, I don't think starting up my first business, there's been a lot of risk. I'm quite, I'm, I'm willing to take the jump and, and willing to, to try something new. And with money, I think mainly that's the only thing you can lose. And, um, I think my mum's always taught me, as much as I, I value money and I do say that money's money, you win some, you lose some. If I lose 10 grand, I lose 10 grand. And if I get a gain 15 grand, then I gain 15 grand. And I think while I've been young, it's been fun to, to experiment and, and, and try something different for me. It's taken a lot of determination, a lot. And I think for me, it's taken a lot of determination because I work with children and parents and it's a service-based industry. So, like, because I have to work so closely with people, sometimes it can be really, really, really hard to keep going when you feel like you've been stabbed in the back or people have been very fickle with you. I think, um, I think for me, I was emotionally attached to the business because it meant so much to me and the children that I was working with. Um, I've learned to detach myself a bit more from the children. I still care, but um, I've learned I can't get as emotionally involved as I have been. I think that's been a massive learning curve, but it does take a hell of a lot of determination. And I mean, a lot of the time I'm working 60, 70 hours a week and this is still two, two years later and I'm, I'm starting another business on top of that. So, um, I, I don't know, I, I think it's, it's not for the faint hearted. I'm lucky that I do it in something that I love and I'm passionate about. I wouldn't recommend trying to do it with something that you're not passionate about. I, I don't ever see myself being a for-profit so uh, you know entrepreneur at all it's always going to have to have a social angle uh, it's just the way I am uh, it's hardwired in me I can't see myself accumulating a lot of money <laughs> uh, profit in that way but the profit that I do generate from Fall Lunch it does go back into enabling my social mission is met and is expanded and the quality is maintained as well um, social enterprise is a fantastic fantastic field I, I'm just beaming with excitement for it and I've been like just so excited about the field for the last three years and long may it continue. My family did not really support or understand what I was doing at all. My friends are obviously very supportive they volunteered with for lunch they freelance for for lunch and that side of things is very good they, they see me day to day doing what I'm doing but I, I'm afraid that my mum and dad, they live in London, um, they don't actually see 
They're a bit suspicious. I think they just think I'm unemployed. Um, fair enough. I, I think the only time that they will recognise what I'm doing is when I have premises or if I get some like certification from the Queen or something like that. <laughs> and you know that doesn't stop me at all. It doesn't stop me because if it if it if it influenced my mindset, I wouldn't be here still doing it after two and a half years, three years. I think the most essential thing that startup founders need to succeed is support and advice. Um, and I think people underestimate how far um, emotional support from family and friends can 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 go with a with a startup entrepreneur. Because I think some of the hardest times it's been my mum or my boyfriend that's helped me through it and my friends. Um, and business advice as well. Just somebody going, don't worry, I've made mistakes, so it's okay to make mistakes. Um, and I think generally, which I, I don't know if the, you know, the UK and Britain in general is, is good at doing, is just letting startup founders and just business people, entrepreneurs, know that it's okay to make mistakes, that everyone makes mistakes, you don't have to beat yourself up about it. You know, because when I start speaking to other people, they say, oh, don't worry, I've done that, or, you know, it's normal to have that or you know but sometimes you, it can be very very daunting and, and, and kind of I don't know you feel like it's embarrassing to speak about it until you you vocalize it and you realize it's not self-determination is probably one of the top qualities you need along with perseverance so they're going hand in hand really perseverance and determination because you things don't come easy no matter how good your idea is I think my idea is bloody brilliant but no one's going to give me money or give me business if I just sit on my ass and just hope for an email to pop in my inbox I had to call up people I didn't know email people I didn't know go to networking events where I was the youngest person in the room and I just had to fight my corner and say what I did, not be shy at all and to really, you know, champion myself. Um, if I could give myself one piece of advice, it's that not everything needs to cost that much money because I've wasted so much money on silly things um, and I don't think I was resourceful. I could have been a lot more resourceful because the money was thrown at me through winning business competitions. Um, I just I spent it without thinking very well and now you know, I've had to be a lot more resourceful and I realise how resourceful I can be. Um, another thing is, I'd tell myself to just network and try and find people who do things because a lot of the time it builds better relationships as well um, and you never ever know who you're going to meet. So that's what I'd tell myself. You need to have some money backed up. You can't just like quit your job and go with it with no savings, which is what I think some people do do and expect to succeed. But there's a lot of hard graft and understanding exactly what your business is and that takes time. And in order to have the luxury of time, you do need some money. I'm gonna say it, it's true. I, I would say the things that, uh, the, the brands or the startups that are really taking off generally are embracing um, new trends very early, um, it, it basically in the infancy stages, figuring out how to manipulate that to their benefit, to bring it to um, fill a need in the marketplace. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's not something that everybody's gifted with, um, but the, I've seen a lot of really smart, bright young people take an idea and, um, you know, picking the right mentors, working with the right businesses, they get the opportunity to develop them and then they become wildly successful and I love seeing that.